I'm Dr. Alan Chapman, a medical and scientific historian at Oxford University and a member of the Faculty of Modern History and of Rodham College. I'm also a biographer of Robert Hooke and particularly interested in the development of scientific medicine in the 17th century and the early Royal Society. Robert Hooke was a remarkable figure at a time of the very beginnings of the Royal Society in the 1660s. Initially here at Oxford, he was a member of Christ Church and worked with Boyer at his house in the High Street as his research assistant. But it was only went to London to become the curator of experiments at the newly founded Royal Society that he really began to cut his teeth as a brilliant experimental physiologist. But it was Hooke's work on the microscope which was absolutely fundamental. He didn't invent it, he improved it, but what he did was to take it further than anybody else. And in micrography, he uses one word that actually resonates through the whole of medical history. The word, the cell. The living cell. Now it's true who did not understand what cells were, what they did. He had no idea of their physiology or their replication. That was discovered in Germany 200 years later by Rudolf Wacker. But he first defined them. And he saw the biggest you could see in things like cork, great big ones. And he calculated that they were so massively tiny. And he, even in addition to that, worked on the idea that they probably were related to carrying nutritious substances through the body, what he called the succus nutritius in the Latin. The idea was he called them cells because he said rather like monk cells in a monastery or prisoner cells in a jail, they were completely self-contained little areas. They were somehow, he thought, connected, like I say, to the nutrition of the living creature, although their full biological importance would not be understood for 200 years. But Robert Hooke in micrographia, he's without any shroud of a doubt, one of the great leading firsts in Oxford medicine. This is my own reproduction of Robert Hooke's microscope, made with my own little pause some years ago from detailed descriptions found in Hooke's various writings. It's very, very simple, and it's amazing the power that this thing has. It consists of two lenses, a very small lens in here, the microscope object glass, and another big lens around here. The rest of the tube is completely empty. This is a sort of condensing lens here. What happens is that this contains nothing whatsoever. It's simply a sort of guide to the eye to make sure that you put your eye at what opticians would call the exit cone of the light. So you put your eye to the exit cone of the light. This microscope will show me details in a fly's wing. It will show me big cells not the kind of biological cells used in modern medicine, they're much, much tinier. You need totally different microchips for them. But the really big ones, things like cork and wood and things like that, which Hooke first defined. It has a very, very primitive adjustment. It's cardboard tubes and wood, basically speaking. No slides in those days. You simply put your specimen on the end of this little point, put it under here and made adjustments. But it really does work.